I'm going to show you Wing IDE. It's a Python IDE, and it's it's actually the first IDE that I ever started with, and it's uh, actually one of my favorites. So I just wanted to uh, to show it to you. This is the Wing IDE website. It's wingware.com, and you can download it from the download section at the top. There's actually three different ones you can get. There's Wing Pro, Wing Personal, and, and Wing 101. So the last two uh, are free, whereas the, the Pro Edition is a paid version. And it's actually not an open source program. It's a proprietary application. So if we go over to the download section again, and if I click on Wing Pro, for example, there's uh, the packages on the right. There's the Debian package and RPM package and a, a TAR installer. If you're using a different operating system, it's also available for Windows and Mac OS. So this is the main user interface. This is Wing IDE. And the version that I'm running now is actually the latest stable release. It's 9.1.2 and this is Wing Pro. I have a, a licensed copy of it. Wing IDE is made using Qt and PyQt. And in my opinion, it's uh, one of the better Python IDEs on the market right now. Here we have our code section where we can write our code. On the left-hand side, I have a list of files where it says project. So these are the files of my project. Here, this is the source browser where it shows a, a list of classes and methods and functions. And there's all sorts of other panels um, at the bottom on the left. You can actually move these around too if you wanted to. And we also have a toolbar at the top where you can start your application and you can also debug it. Any project that you work on is opened and saved using the project menu at the top. So right now I'm in an existing project, but if I wanted to open a, a project, I can click on open project. And from here I can browse and we can see here I have a project with a WPR extension, which is a wing project. Uh, I already have it open. But if you wanted to see a list of recently opened projects, you can do that from here as well, you know, under the recent submenu. The, the file menu isn't really used for opening projects. It's used for saving individual Python files. So if I create a new Python file, for example, I can go to file save as and create that new Python file. But if I want to save a new project, or if I want to save my existing project with all the changes, uh, I just need to go to project at the top and then click on save project or save project as. The Python interpreter that's currently being used can be changed from going into project and then project properties. So right now, this is the Python interpreter that I'm using. It's in this folder. If I click the drop down, it gives me a list of all the uh, recent Python interpreters that, that I can use. If you want to use the main Python interpreter that comes with your Linux distro, then you can just choose use default and it'll uh, just use the one that it finds. If I want to see which packages my application is using, I can go over to tools at the top and then I can click on packages. And these are the packages that my application is currently using. So what about code navigation? How do we navigate through code? Code navigation is one of the strengths of Wing IDE in my opinion. So for example, right now, if I click here, it tells me exactly which class I'm in. I'm in the purpose class. If I want to see a list of the other classes in this Python file, I can click this drop down and I can see a list of all the other classes that are here in this, in this file. Another thing I can do is on the left-hand side, I can choose source browser, and I can see a list of classes in this file. And you'll notice that if I choose 
default page, for example, it takes me there. And if I go to a different class here, it won't actually select the class that I'm in on the left-hand side, but it will show me which class I'm in at the very top. This is actually one of the strengths of Wing IDE is at the top, it'll show me the class that I'm in, including the method. And in this case, I'm in check inputs. So here I can choose a different method and same thing with this. I can choose different classes. So here within shared pages, I have another class. I have other classes within a class. So these are nested classes. So here I have some classes here, some nested classes here, and the method names in that subclass. So you can see that it, it makes it really easy to navigate to the different classes and methods in your project. And especially if you have a, a big project, that's definitely a, a welcoming feature. So what if I want to go to a specific method? So this one here, it says create content frame. So I can hold the control key on the keyboard and then click on it and it takes me there. Now mind you, in this case, it was right below it. So it was easy to find. But for some other ones, let's say if I want to go to the frame uh, method here, or this is a, a class, if I click on it, it takes me to the frame class, which is part of TTK. You'll notice these two arrows here. This will take you back in history. This will go forward. So back and next. So if I click on the back arrow here, it takes me back to where I was before I clicked on control click on this frame. So I can do that with other things too. Like if I want to find, let's find a, another method. Yeah, check inputs. So if I click control on the, or if I hold down control on the keyboard and if I click check inputs, it takes me to check inputs. And then if I want to go back to where I was, I just click on this back arrow and it takes me back to where I was. Another cool thing that this does uh, in, in the pro version is as you type, it puts spaces after the equal operator. So for example, if I put test equal five, whoops, test equal five, you'll notice that it put the spaces for me automatically. I didn't have to type those in. Let me try it again, test equal five. Notice that it just added it automatically. And same thing with parentheses. Like if I put in test, it just closed it automatically like that. And if I create a new list, you'll notice that it put the square brackets in. It, I, I just had to type this one and then it created the ending closing square bracket for me automatically. Th this can be configured as well. Like going to opt, uh, if you go over to edit preferences, there's a section here for auto completion. And there's all sorts of uh, settings that you can check out. Auto editing. Yeah, actually auto editing. You know, there's one here that says auto close characters. And same thing with, with uh, strings. So if I write my string equal hello it, it put in the the double quotes uh for me so it, actually I, I typed the first quote and then it put in the ending quote automatically so it's just less typing so what if you want to search through code so let's say if i want to find something in my code called sprite object so i press Control f I type in sprite underscore object. I don't have anything here in this file named sprite object. I can also press control shift F, which will search all my Python files. Uh, maybe it's without an underscore. Yeah, it's without an underscore. So in this case, I just put in control shift F and it's searching all my files and we can see here that I have 
sprite object here. And if I press control click, it takes me to that class. So here, search in files, it's searching all the files on my project. And a search here will search the, uh, the text in the current Python file that I'm in. So I actually use that quite frequently. And you'll notice that it lists all the search results in, in one flat list. It's not nested, so it's uh, quite easy to see. And you, and you can click on it, and if it's not the one that you're looking for, uh, you can click on back, or you can just keep clicking until you do find the one that you're interested in. Oh, and these tabs can be moved around. Like, you can take search and files and then move it here. Uh, you can actually, and the reason why it's going down is when you click on it once, it goes down. Like, if I click on it, it hides. Uh, so that's why it, it goes down. That's because I'm accidentally clicking at the top here. And you can move this entire section somewhere else. Like if, if I right click on search and files, I can say move search and files to left toolbox split number one. So now it's, it's here on the left hand side. This is search and files. If I, I clicked on it again, if I want to move it back, I can, I can drag it. That's actually easier. I can. I can say move search files to bottom toolbox split number one or split number two because you'll notice at the bottom there's one split here and another split here. So let's move it to split number one and there it's back. So I could have actually just taken this tab and dragged it into there and I could have just taken that tab and dragged it back and now it's back. So dragging is actually easier. Next thing I was going to talk to you about is type hints. So Wing ID does support type hints. And what I mean by that is, let's say if you create a variable and you say test equal none. And later on in your code, this test will actually become a sprite object. So you can tell Wing ID that test is currently none, but eventually it's going to be a sprite object. So I want test to be treated like a sprite object. So that means now if I type in test dot, I get the options that are related to a sprite object. I get the, uh, the methods that are part of a sprite, uh, sprite object. And if I change this to, for example, a, a string, then wing IDE will consider that to be a string. So now I see all the methods that are specific to a string. So it supports type hinting, which is which is really neat. If I don't have type hinting, then if I do test dot, there's nothing that comes up because it's considered to be none. And just to be clear, if I if I do, and again, if I put in test str, this doesn't mean that it's a string. It just means that Wing IDE will treat it like a string, but it's technically not a string yet. If I do test equal Hello, now it's officially a string, but before this line, it's not a string. Okay, and now for one of the most important topics of an IDE, uh, debugging. So debugging happens at the top here. Here, this is where you start de debugging, and I'll explain the rest as, as we go. So if I go over to my project, the file that it starts with is the one that I set to be a main entry point. What I mean by that is if I go to the list of Python files, you'll notice that my Python file called startup.py, it has text here that says main entry point. That means that when I start debugging, it's gonna start with startup.py. I can change that. If I right click on snap handler and set it to set as main entry point, now, when I debug, it's going to start with that file. But in this case, I don't want it to do that because there's nothing useful in there for it to start with. So I'm going to make startup.py my main entry point. So that's how you can choose which file it starts with. Okay, so I'm going to start debugging. So it's running my project in debug mode right now. And if I click on project, this is just my application. 
going to open the project in my application. You know, it opens up, everything looks normal. But what if I wanted to add a breakpoint to see what my code is doing? So I know that there's some code under open project somewhere. So let's search for open project, open underscore project. There it is. So let's add a breakpoint after the file has been selected. So to add a breakpoint, I just click on this area here beside the line number and you'll notice that it appears in red to show that it's going to stop here. Okay, so let's try it again. If I run my application, open project. So after I select a file, it should actually start debugging from that point. And it did. You'll notice that it's highlighted now. If I move my mouse over this variable, it will show me the value that this variable has in it, which is this. And we have more options at the top now. I can stop the application, like I can stop debugging. I can restart my application. So, so it starts debugging all over again. Pause. Here, uh, run to the current cursor position and I'll explain all this. And this one is step into current exec execution point. This one is step over current statement. This one is, is step out of the current function or method. Move up the debug stack. Show the position. And this one is move down the current debug stack. Okay. So the one I'm going to use now is, so right now it's on a debug point. It's, it's my application has stopped here, which we can tell because it's highlighted. I wanted to go beyond this. So I'm not interested in this line. I want it to go to the next line. So I click on this, the one that's a step over. Okay, so let's click that. Okay, so it didn't need to run return. It went over to the next line that it needs to evaluate. Main window dot withdraw. That's fine. I'm actually not interested in that either. So let's go over to the next line by clicking this again. Now here, I'm more interested in what it's going to do. So I don't want it to skip over this line. I want it to go inside what it's about to do in this class. I want to go deeper into this line to see what it does before it makes it to this. So to do that, I click the one that's uh, pointing downwards, step into current execution point. And when I click on it, notice the name of the class, editor main app. If I click on this down arrow, now I'm inside editor main app. So I'm actually in here now. I'm in that class. And I can click this step over again. And then I realize, oh, wait a minute. I'm not actually interested in this class. Let's just get out of this class and we'll go back to where it was. So how do I get out of this class that I'm actually not interested in? Well, to do that, I click on step out of the current function or method. So if I click step out, You'll notice I'm back exactly where I was. Uh, it skipped over this and now I'm here. And I'm going to click on step over. I'm not interested in that. Step over again. And the reason why it's flashing, it's because my, my application is opening a window. It's not Wing IDE that's doing that flashing. It's my own application that's, that's doing it. And what about those other buttons here? So we have move up the current stack. So if I click that, it shows me where it was before it got to that point. In other words, before it started this breakpoint, where was it before? Like even before this, this whole method. And to see the stack, you can click on this. It shows you the stack. So before it was here, Prior to this, it was on the main loop. If I click on this diamond, it takes me to where it is now. And that's actually a, another important point. Let's say if you're all over the place and you're looking at different files and um, and all of a sudden you, you lose track of where the debug point was. 
because we're still debugging. You can just click this diamond. It'll take you right back to where it was. So when you click this up arrow, it's essentially choosing these menus for you. So right now we're on on open project menu. We're going to go to call it by just clicking this up arrow. And you'll notice it's on call. If I want to go back down, I can click that down arrow. And it moves down the stack. So that's, that's what it does. So those are the, uh, the main debugging options at the top. There's another one here that says run to cursor position. So we're de debugging all over again. So let's say if I wanted to, to stop when it reaches here. So I click on that line that I'm interested in and it says run to current cursor position. So when I click it, it skipped all those different lines and it stopped where I had my cursor. So that's what that does. If you wanted, if you wanted to see the values of all the variables in the current stack, you can click on stack data and then you can see it. So file full path, for example, there it is. That's a path to the file that I'm opening. Um, the variables under self, the attributes, they're all here. I can expand, I can read it. If I wanted to copy it, I can right click and say show value as text. And now I can copy this to the clipboard. And to hide it again, right click, hide value detail. So those are the main debugging features in Wing IDE. Let's have a look at Git integration. So with Git, there's a tab here called Git and it shows any files that have been modified. So in this case, wizard window has been modified. I'm currently in the snap detection branch. If I click on options, I can click on list all branches and it'll show me a list of the branches. So right now it's in the branch section. If I click this X, it'll take me back to the project status. And these are all the different Git options that you can use. You can push the, uh, the changes. You can see a diff. So if I click on diff, oh, I guess there, there are no differences in this file. I would have to go to wizard window. So if I go to the wizard window file and if I click on diff, it shows me the differences between what I have and what the repository has. So if I click on that X again, I can switch the branch and these are all the, the Git options that are available. So that's the general overview of Wing IDE. Uh, Wing is actually one of those programs I really like. It's actually the first Python IDE that I started with. I started with version seven, I believe it was. Um, it's, it's actually not a new program. Like if I go to help and about, you can see that it says 1998 to 2003. So it's, it's actually a Python IDE that's been around for quite a while. And I, I just like how uh, responsive the user interface is. I like the code navigation. I love the, uh, the, I love the menus at the top, which show me the names of the classes and the methods. It just makes it so easy to move around. So the only way to really know if Wing IDE is right for you is to just download it and give it a try. So again, they do have some free versions that you can try. They won't have the full feature set if you get one of the free ones, uh, but the paid version does have like a 30 day trial that you can try to see if it suits your needs. By the way, I have a donation page on Kofi. Uh, the link is up on the screen right now. So if you're interested, and supporting me that's a that's a great way of doing it i would appreciate it i hope you enjoyed this video until the next one thanks for watching